Today we talk about Cal imperfect, specifically strong verbs. If you haven't mastered the Cal perfect, both the strong and the weak verbs, you need to stop. You need to go do that first. Have you mastered it? Yes? Good. Let's continue. If the perfect represents complete action, action that's completed in the mind of the speaker or in the mind of the writer. Generally speaking, it uses the past tense, but it doesn't have to be past tense. The imperfect represents incomplete action and generally will be translated by some sort of future tense or present tense. Remember, Hebrew does not have tense built in. Time is derived from context and context alone. Note that the Hebrew imperfect is also used of habitual action, customary action. But again, past, present, future doesn't matter because that's derived from context. The imperfect can also be used for modal, would, could, should, that kind of thing. In Greek, that would be the subjunctive or the optative. In Hebrew, it just uses the imperfect. But again, it's all dependent on context. Now, if the perfect was the suffix conjugation, meaning we tacked on some letters on the end of the verb, the cal imperfect is a prefix conjugation, wherein it adds on to the beginning of the verb. So, you can consider imperfect. You add on I am at the beginning to the perfect. Now that's what the imperfect does in the Hebrew conjugation. It adds on to the beginning. Now, these prefixes are technically called preformatives. I'm just going to call them prefix or prefixes. Keep it simple. Now, that being said, while imperfect is the prefix conjugation, it still uses, in some instances, its own suffixes. So it's not as simple as to say the perfect is the, the suffix conju conjugation and the imperfect is the prefix conjugation. It's not that simple because imperfect uses a mixture of prefix and suffix. The difference is the perfect only uses suffixes. Do you follow? So, returning to katal, to kill, in the imperfect, we add a suffix, third masculine singular, yiktol. So we add yod kirik. And then you'll notice the in katal here, with the third masculine singular imperfect, the comets changes to a silent shava and it will be consistent throughout this entire conjugation. So you'll note that the stem vowel becomes a holum after the second consonant. And so third masculine singular, cal imperfect, yiktol. Now we want the accent to be on the final syllable, so it should be yiktol. Third feminine singular changes the yod to a tav, a tav with a dagesh. So Tick-toll. Now, the second masculine singular is identical to the third feminine singular. Tick-toll. Context will be key in determining is it third feminine or second masculine. Don't forget about context. Context is key. Context is king. Now, when it comes to second feminine singular, not only do we have our prefix, but we also have a suffix. Tiktali. So we have the same tav with a dagesh and a hirik up front as our prefix. But now we add hirik yod at the end. Tiktali. Tiktali. There we go. Get the accent right. Now don't confuse this with the first common singular of cal perfect. We know it's not the cal perfect because we have a prefix. In the first common singular, cal imperfect, our prefix is an aleph, aleph segel, ectol, ect 
toll. Now, before in the Cal perfect, we only had a third common plural. In the imperfect, we have a third masculine plural and a third feminine plural. The third masculine plural looks identical to the third masculine singular, except it adds a suffix. So if our third masculine singular was yiktol, third masculine plural is yiktalu. Yiktalu. Now the third feminine plural looks just like the third feminine singular, but adds a suffix. Tiktolna. Tiktolna. Note where the accent is on this one. It's not on the end. Tiktolna. Now the second masculine plural looks just like the second masculine singular, except the addition of a suffix. Tiktolu. Tiktolu. Now the second feminine plural is identical to the third feminine plural. Tiktolna. And lastly, in the first common plural, our prefix is a noon, noon hiric, niktol, niktol. So be able to recognize, but you really need to memorize and master this paradigm. Understand that some of them are identical with each other. Understand that context will be key. Memorize the preformatives, the prefixes, memorize the subformatives or the suffixes because these form the foundation of the imperfect. You need to know these. Now there is one alternate form. This is the third masculine plural and second masculine plural. Whether it's uh, yiktolu, yiktolu, or tiktolu, sometimes, in fact, 250 plus times in total, a final noon is added, so it would be yiktaloon or tiktaloon. This is called in Latin noon paragogicum or paragogicum. Noon paragogicum. If I'm pronouncing it right, I have no idea. So just be aware that sometimes this creeps up 250 plus times in total. You just need to know that it's there. Another thing to be aware of is sometimes the shirik can change to a kibitz. This is called defective, uh, de defective spelling. And we've seen this before. This isn't anything new where sometimes the vowels can change. They can shorten or be rewritten because some of the vowels sound the same as another, such as shirik plus kibitz. They are virtually the same sound. So sometimes you'll see, instead of a shirik, you'll see a kibitz when there is a final noon. In the perfect conjugation, we saw stative verbs had different classifications. Pathak stative, tsere stative, holum stative. In the imperfect, all of these different classes simply use pathak as the stem vowel. So for example, Look at katon, to be small. Yiktan, third masculine singular. Tiktan, third feminine singular. Tiktan, second masculine singular. Tiktani, second feminine singular. Ektan, first common singular. Yiktanu, third masculine plural. Tiktanu, third feminine plural. Tiktanu, second masculine plural. Tiktanu, second feminine plural. Niktan, first common plural. So the point is, regardless of the class of state of verb in the imperfect, they all use pathak as the stem vowel. And to remind you, the stem vowel is the last vowel used, unless there's a vowel in the suffix. Don't forget about that. Now we previously looked at negation a couple of videos ago. You need to understand how negation works with the imperfect specifically. In the imperfect, just like the perfect stem, lo is used to negate the action of the verb. 
low always occurs immediately before the verb. Now, Hebrew does use a special, a special construction of low plus imperfect verb to communicate a permanent prohibition. So it's enforce a command, a negative command, therefore prohibition. And the best example of this is the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments uses the imperfect, but each one is low. Thou shalt not do blank, covet thy neighbor's wife, commit adultery, murder, so on and so forth. However, Hebrew also uses another prohibition construction that's not absolute and permanent in nature. It's temporary. It uses al or al, aleph, pathak, lamed, plus the imperfect. These ones are immediate prohibitions. They are specific prohibitions with no expectation of, of duration provided. So low is permanent, al is immediate, specific, but it's not permanent. Typically, al will be added to the verb and connected with a makef, where al comes first, the verb comes second after the makef. So an example with lo is lo tenaf, thou shalt not commit adultery. And an example with al is al tira, do not fear. And that's it for today. I hope you found this video helpful. Master this content before moving on. If you need to go back and revisit the perfect at all, now's the time to do it. If you go watch this video here, this is the Cal Perfect Week Verbs. Enjoy.